not long ago, we did a casting test with some melted metal in our new foundry and we got this fantastic knife. Uh, it's not a perfect result. This was from casting into dry sand using lost styrofoam, which is not necessarily the best way to do anything, especially small, delicate parts. So we want to move on to being able to do green sand, which is a sand that holds its shape without the master form inside. It just has an empty space in there. So today we gotta make some boxes, we gotta make some green sand, and then we are going to do some tests with a couple of friends trying to make some better castings than this totally successful, but also totally failed knife. First up, I've got a bunch of pieces of plywood that I've cut down to a good shape and size. You gotta refine that and then turn them into some boxes. Now I'm going to be making two boxes, a smaller one and a bigger one so that I don't have to waste too much sand on a big one if I'm only gonna be casting a small part. Got two different widths of boards here and for all of them, I'm just going to be cutting these boards in half. With each of these boxes, there's a top half and a bottom half. They need to be the same size. So I'm going to take all of these boards that I've got here, trim them to identical lengths, and cut them all in half. And I should have enough for both of my boxes. That excellent size for a box. Oh, that's great. All right, we've got our two small boxes. They're looking good. Now we need a couple of bigger boxes. All right, two boxes. Very nice. Uh, they fit together pretty well. Now we gotta add some things on the sides to help them key in together and some latches so that they'll stay closed and hooked up together. If you wanna see more details about how to build these, there is an old King of Random video just about this and the one about the green sand that I'm gonna be making, so you can go check those out for a more step-by-step. -step. This is just me trying to make it work with some cool 3D printed parts. Now it's one final step to make sure that the boxes will stay together when we want them to. I'm adding a couple of these chest latches on the either side. Ah, excellent. Everything seems to be holding itself together. It's nice and tight. It looks very lined up. That is just what we want to see. This box should be ready for some casting. the box is built, it's time to move on to making our green sand. And we've got three ingredients for that. The first is sand. Second is kitty litter, specifically a kitty litter that is made of Fuller's Earth, and then some water. But with the sand and the Fuller's Earth, we want to make sure that we're using only like the finest grains of it. So we are going to make sure that we're doing that by using a filter, and in the case of the kitty litter, a blender. Uh, I tried to get a good sieve at the store, and all of the ones that I could find had too large of a mesh. They would have let too big of pieces of sand in. So I actually got this oil splatter guard, which is a metal mesh. It's just finer than any of the sieves they had there. So now I just need to start putting sand through the sieve into this other bucket. The sand I got is actually pretty fine to start with, so it shouldn't actually take out that much material, but I just wanna make sure I don't have any of the larger grains in the green sand. Okay, we have measured off about 40 pounds of this sand at this point, which I think should be a great start. And now we need to get about four to five pounds of our kitty litter in here. But first, we have to blend it and then also run it through the sieve so that we're getting the right proportion. Got myself a uh, cheap blender because I don't want to ruin a good one. And uh, now I got to blend it up to get into small little powder instead of the sort of rocks that it comes in. I don't know how much kitty litter you can safely blend in a blender at once. They don't really talk about that on the instructions. I'm gonna try that much, see how it goes. A better blender might have uh, done a better job of circulating it. As it is, it just kind of stays at the bottom and I blend the same stuff over and over. Ooh. 
yep, definitely not all of it got blended. It's already falling in. All right, we're gonna do a little bit longer of a blend. Try and fail in fewer ways next time. Anyone who wants that on a t-shirt, let me know. We've got our fuller's earth from the kitty litter. We've got our fine grain sands. Time to start mixing them together and adding the water. Uh, to mix them together, I'm just gonna mix them together. There's nothing fancy about it. The trick is gonna be getting it mixed all the way down into the bottom of the bucket. All right, with our sand and fuller's earth mixed together, it's time to start adding the water. We're gonna do that a little bit at a time. I'll pour it from the bucket into this other bucket, and I'll just add some water with a spray bottle. Spray down the surface, mix it all in until you get to the right texture, and I'll just do that, you know, four or five, six times until we've got all this mixed up with just the right amount of water. If I do all of it at once, I'm never gonna be able to stir it all. Several hours later. All right, now I'm here with the guys from the channel Good and Basic. They're around somewhere. We'll have them walking in and out of camera. I'm going to try to use the sand casting boxes that I've just made. First thing I'm going to try and do is this uh, iron giant head that Joseph 3D printed for me. Um, this is not an ideal shape for sand casting in that no matter what angle you have it at, there are at least some undercuts. The fewest is if we go this direction. That way the only undercut really is the jaw here. So what I'm gonna try and do is sink this halfway in the sand and then build more sand up, very compacted up to the level of his jaw and then carve it off at a nice slope. That way I should be able to separate the sand. I should be able to get his face out, but I should also be able to build the other sand up over it. So I'll build that, take it out, and hopefully we'll be able to get a clean casting off of that. We're gonna take some of our uh, baby powder, our anti-monkey butt powder as it brands itself. And I'm gonna coat the 3D print to get a nice even coverage all over everything because I don't want it to stick to any of the sand and 3D printed parts that you haven't carefully sanded and smoothed down. I'm gonna start by scooping out some of this sand. I've got too much in here. I'm never gonna be able to displace all of that. All right, I think we're actually about at the halfway line in terms of depth there. And I'll just build up anywhere that isn't. There is some overlap. So I was just wrong about the shape and I'm not sure how I was misreading the situation so badly, but I, if I build the sand up around the jaw the way I was describing, I would not be able to pull the head out. And there are probably a few of you out there who are saying, Nate, you're an idiot, when I was describing that. You're right. So now I'm contemplating other options. Some of those options involve losing detail in the casting. One of those options involves trying something rather ludicrous. And I'm going to, I'm going to try it. I don't think it's going to work, but the downsides of trying it are very low. So I'm gonna try it anyway and see if it looks like it's going to be working before I proceed. That's a downside to trying it, I guess. <sighs> Little fiber of the sock caught on like some of the fibers of the 3D print and just pulled it right up out of the sand. My other option is that I can backfill these undercuts a little bit. I've got some oil-based clay here. I'm just filling in all of these spots. I'll smooth it out. And that's gonna be our uh, probably much, much better solution than what I was trying before. Look at that beautiful back filling. All those undercuts just gone. So now I should just be able to cast the whole thing sideways like that. And in theory, it'll come out nicely. In practice, I'm sure I'm gonna be annoyed at some things. All right, I've got the head down in the sand. It's looking pretty nicely divided. Good amounts of sand butting up against all the edges. So now I'm gonna take the other box, put it on top, cover everything with a very generous coating of our powder, and then fill that box with compacted sand the same way. Hopefully, after I do that, I'll be able to lift it all off, getting a negative of the Iron Giant's head in the sand. I also wanna point out that while I have done this before, I haven't done this a lot before, 
so I am not an expert. There's really only one way to see if the mold works. Here goes. That is not the right thing. Oh, and even more of it just fell out. As I set it down, more of the sand fell out the back and onto the floor and onto my foot. So unfortunately, that is not the result we're hoping for. Well, I think we're gonna try it again with just an unholy quantity of baby powder. Now, is that too much? I don't know. Didn't stick terribly to the 3D print itself, so I'm not as worried about that. It's just the sand. Well, we're back at that point again where the only thing to do is see if we succeeded or failed. Okay, okay, well, look, I don't think we're gonna get a great result out of this, but I think we're just gonna try it and see what result we do get out of it. Lots of stuff that could still go very wrong with this, including all of the sand could pour and fall right out of this box as I tip it sideways to, uh, to close back up. It did happen. All right. Well, either something is wrong with my sand or something is wrong with my technique. All right, we've been having some issues with the sand really being able to adhere to itself and the, the sidewalls of the box. But I kind of wonder if the fact that there was so little large grain also means that there's less small grain. I didn't buy just the playground sand, which is gonna have a large variety from like the larger grains down to the sort of dust. And I kind of think that maybe because of the lack of the dust sized particles that's in the sand, it doesn't compact as well. Um, and so I did a test where I took some of it and I mixed it in with a little bit of the glass bead dust that I have, which is extremely fine. And it holds itself together really well. So I'm going to take some glass bead and I'm going to just add it into my sand. I put it in my hand and I squeeze and I can feel the sand actually squishing down and compacting into a tighter form. Whereas this stuff, like I can squeeze it and sometimes it will stick together, but like I don't feel it actually like crushing down, getting any smaller, changing its form. So I'm gonna add glass to all of this, throw in a little bit more clay, a little bit more water, and see if I don't get a better, squishier result. So I've just got my glass powder. I've got it in this, this is a sandblasting machine. And because we just added so much dry material, we're just gonna add a little bit more water. We've got our sand with our glass and our clay mixed into it. We already had some clay. We added more clay and quite a bit of our glass bead dust. And now this stuff has some real squish to it. Like I can feel it compacting in my hand. It, it gets smaller and then it holds itself together quite well, but it still just breaks apart, which is exactly what you're looking for. So I think we now have a better texture sand and I'm gonna try this again, see if we can get our Iron Giant to cast in this improved sand, and hopefully we'll have a better result than the last couple times. Moment of truth. It's also the moment of most failures, so... I don't know how I feel about it. Ah, well, oh my gosh, again? It really does not want to stay in the back of the box. Well, I'm curious how it turned out on the other side. So if I get this out, what am I gonna have in here? That side's pretty good. I think we might go for a, a half, a good half casting on our Iron Giant here. We're gonna have one side that's okay, not perfect, because we did still get some sand like stuck in these very sharp corners that we're casting, but largely there. And then we're gonna have one side that's, eh, you know, it's, it's whatever. Half of the sand on. And again, of course, it could fail at this point when I try and put this back on and just ruin everything. We got the box back on. It's not perfect, but we're gonna try it anyway. We're gonna see what we get out of it. I've been here with the guys from Good and Basic for a couple days, and we've been working on some really cool stuff. 
If you want to see how we did things like make this gold looking spearhead, you should go check out their channel and I think I'm probably appearing in a few of your videos. I don't really know. I'm not even sure if they know yet how many videos are going to be coming out of this, but we're going to be doing some more work on these, cleaning them up at my workshop, trying to make them look extra pretty. So yeah, they're helping me out quite a bit and uh, this is a good time. Lots more casting stuff. If you want to see how we did that, including not just sand casting, we've got some other weird ways. What, what are some of the things we've been doing? We used cob, which is a mixture of clay, literally dug out of the backyard with straw and sand. And by straw, he means grass clippings in this case, but close enough. Yeah, it's like the, the local wheat harvest, except more local. Yeah, and then we, we've been using some plaster jackets as well. So lots of cool stuff. If you enjoy this casting kind of thing, come check us out on their channel, Good and Basic. The actual act of pouring went well. It's gonna be some time before we know how well it actually worked in the casting. It may not have filled that chamber all the way. There may be some gaps at the top. We didn't add any vent holes into it. I was figuring that since it's such an open, not spherical, but kind of getting that shape cavity, it might be able to just pour right in. So we're gonna give it some time to cool down, make sure it's really had a chance to solidify, and we'll take it out of the sand, cool it down in some water or snow, and see how it's looking. River's not here, but we have a, an, an extra backup dog just in case. The metal inside there, of course, is extremely hot and it started to radiate up through the sand as you can now see this dry area of sand and the steam coming off of it. It's just evaporating out through the sand into the air. We also have a very small pit at the, at the top of the pore spot and I believe that's where as the metal has cooled and shrunk, it's pulled down what liquid metal was left through that little gap. All right, we've given our metal time to cool down, at least a little bit. It's definitely solid now. It may not, in fact, be cold. And ooh, yeah, little drop just came off of this. Let's see. That is still very warm. See what happens if I, I'm, yeah, if I just dig through a little bit. What is this? We got some, I see some metal, some shiny golden metal. This is, this metal we're using is aluminum bronze. It's a combination of copper and aluminum. It's got a lovely gold color to it. Oh. I see a large piece of metal vaguely in the right shape. That still has a lot of heat in it. Let's take this to the bucket. Ha, ah, look at that, lots of water. We have baked that sand on there good. All right, there's still plenty of cleanup to do and not everything turned out perfectly, but I think it's identifiable. Whew. All right, we got our big old hulking aluminum bronze iron giant head here. It needs some cleanup. It's got sand stuck to the outside. It's got all of the pore spout stuff. It's got some flashing on it. We're gonna see how well I can clean this up. I don't have a ton of experience with this type of metalworking, just trying to clean up a more of a sculpted piece. So I'm gonna have some fun with this, but it's gonna be pretty new to me. I don't know what the best ways to do it are gonna be. Well, what should really be to the surprise of no one, a sharp blade cuts a lot better than a dull blade. Yeah, that's gotten through a lot of it. I'm gonna, uh, the wheel that I have on there, it isn't long enough to get all the way through. And I can't change that out, but I wanna try putting it back on the bandsaw now that I have a much thinner bit to get through and see how it does. Go. We have freed the head from all of its pore spouts, from all of the excess. Now we just have a lot of cleanup to do. Now the very first thing I'm gonna do is try and get rid of all of the sand that's still there. It's still got some stuff stuck in little bits and places and as I think I discovered, that's not really good for all of the tools, like the bandsaw was struggling when it hit a little pocket of sand. So before I start using any other tools on it, I am just gonna try and clean that out. I've just got a little wire brush on a rotary tool and I think that should do a good job getting that sand out. There's not a ton left. I have scraped a bunch off, but I wanna make sure I've got the rest of it before I hit it with tools. All right, I think I got most of the sand out. 
Now the, the biggest failure point that we have on this is that around the jaw, some of the sand didn't stick the way it was supposed to, and so we have this sort of overfilled area. And so what I want to do is, I'm, first I'm just going to smooth this down right at the neck here. I'm going to try and carve out this extra brass we have. So we have this nice jawline on this side, but on this side it's all backfilled with extra metal. So I'm going to flatten this, and then I'm going to try and take that extra metal out to give it the same jaw that we have on the other side. Neck cleanup went quite well. He's now got a jawline on both sides. I'm loving that. Now there is quite a bit more that needs to happen. For one thing, Iron Giant, he's supposed to have a fin that goes from about between his eyes up over the back of the head. And that part didn't cast very well. I don't have the knowledge or ability to like weld on or build up additional material onto here. So I'm just gonna have to work with what I have, but I'm gonna remove all the flashing on the front here, try and give some shape to what's on the back and then just clean up all the other spots. You know, I've got some parts where you can see where it's supposed to cast. The definition is not very good. So I'm gonna use a variety of tools. I'll use some hand files. I'll use the belt grinder more. I'll use the rotary tool more. Just see how clean I can get this to look. It's not gonna be perfect, but I do think I can clean it up a little bit better than it looks right now. All right, there we go. We've got our golden iron giant, our golden giant, our aluminum bronze giant. But I also kind of feel like it's like a mini Indiana Jones idol because like it's a little, got the big head and it's golden and shiny and very heavy. Indiana Jones would have needed so much bigger a bag of sand than he tried to use in the movie. This, this is not as heavy as gold. And if that idol was real gold, which I, I think was the implication and is like that size, he would have needed like a 20, 30 pound bag of sand. That little whatever he was holding, no wonder. I thought he was supposed to be good at his job. Anyway, this turned out pretty well. Uh, it's not perfect. The sand casting didn't come out perfect. Um, and I definitely would want to try some new things. While working with the guys from Good and Basic, we did several castings as well that were in plaster molds and those turned out way better. In fact, some of those turned out really clean. So if I were going to do this again, I would definitely go for the mold jacket made of plaster mixed with sand because I thought it gave a really good result. I still like this one. It was still cool to use the green sand for casting and we got a decent result that I was able to clean up into something that I think is pretty cool. Uh, but I don't know, would you guys like to see me do more casting experiments in the future? Try and take this even to the next level, get really nice and clean casts. What do we got, what do we got? We have three and a half pounds. Cool. That is solid and heavy. It's mostly copper. Copper is pretty heavy and dense. So what else do you want to see me do with casting? What else do you want to see me do with metalworking? Let me know down in the comments. Guys, thanks for watching. And of course, a very special shout out and thank you to everyone who is supporting me on Patreon. Your support makes a huge difference in everything that I'm able to do, in how many videos I'm able to make, in how good the videos look when I make them. Seriously, I cannot thank you enough. If any of you are interested in joining the Patreon supporters in helping me out here on the channel, the link for that is down in the description. It means the world to me and thank you all. I need a flatter head.